Hi everyone, uh, it's a shame to, for me to come on after all those really good speakers, but uh, <laughs> bear with it. I think, you know, I'm more like a sort of uh, supply teacher at a dodgy comprehensive who sort of uh, shows loads of videos because they've got no lesson plan. So uh, <laughs> that's what we're going to be doing. Um, so bear with me, right, here's the first video of today. There is a grotesque gender imbalance in the VC field right now. I can help you navigate the toxicity of this male culture which is encroaching on our feminist island. I mean, for instance, there is something called mansplaining. Have you heard about this? We know what mansplaining, mansplaining is. Mansplaining is when a man will condescendingly explain something to a woman that she already knows. <laughs> so, uh, I'm gonna be doing a bit of that. It's slightly different, but, um, that's from, if, if you want to check it out, that's Silicon Valley, a brilliant show. Um, I guess for me, I'm taking my inspiration today from, my, from a TED master. So I'm going to be doing stuff like explaining something that everybody already knows, and then doing it in really long-winded detail, and sort of reaching a conclusion that anyone with a modicum of common sense could come up with. And this is not mansplaining, I call this malksplaining. So, uh, sorry. Some uh, Malk fans out there tonight. So, um, well, today. Okay, so uh, <laughs> it worked on one person. That was good. Um, so, I think uh, without further ado, I mean, this is my story. So, it's how I stopped worrying and learned to love Brexit. So, uh, what this is about, it loosely fits in today's uh, theme because it's, um, I guess, it's my journey from one community to another community. And I guess with, you know, communities, they're often defined by their opposition to other communities. So that was, that was classic Malk explaining. Um, so uh, you've got Israelis versus the Palestinians. Palest and then you've got the Protestants, these the Catholics. And then you've got people who literally don't know how to use the word literally versus those of us that do. So, um, there's some uh, <laughs> communities. Um, so, I think, um, and I guess today we're in a sort of the age of outrage, and there's, you know, some very virulent opposition on the internet. There's the kind of, on the right, you've got the kind of alt-right Nazis, and on the left, you've got the kind of libtard snowflake cucks like me, and then you've got them locked in a furious death match in the... Uh, comment section on YouTube and Reddit. Um, so that's, it's kind of, uh, that's a sort of real dichotomy between two communities as well. Here's a good example of that. Can anyone see that? Well, it says, the Rebel Alliance is multi-ethnic. Multi they are now several female fighter pilots, but the engineering team that designed the Death Star is all older white males. And someone's wrote, Libtard's even ruining Star Wars for me. <laughs> so... Uh, <laughs> which is sort of true, you can see where they're coming from. So yeah, there's a lot of opposition amongst communities, a very sort of virulent opposition, and I guess that's why switching from one community to another is difficult in this day and age, because there's nowhere in between. I guess the um, communities I'm talking about, Remainers and Leavers, and um, again, virulent opposition, and you know, I suppose the fact that I'm up here um, tells you all you need to know about me. I not only read The Guardian, I am willing to pay £53 to a, a masterclass with Owen Jones to learn how to tweet more earnestly. I've got, um, <laughs> you know, I've, I run an agency and I've made TV programmes for the Marxist-Leninist BBC. And then um, <laughs> I know how to pronounce quinoa. <laughs> so it's... Um, I'm definitely, I was definitely the ultimate Remainer. Now, but then I guess I saw the light, and it was a light coming from a bulb free from EU safety regulations. And um, <laughs> so that's me, old community Remain. Um, I guess I sort of, I might actually go back and do that a different way. Um, sorry. Um, I guess the... Uh, I've ruined it now. You know what's coming next. <laughs> All right, this is what was going to happen. I was going... Oh, I'm just going to do it. Pretend you didn't see that last slide. 
so basically, this is how, how, how it was meant to happen. Okay, so like most Remainers, I hated Leavers, thinking they're all a bunch of Cro-Magnons. And then I hated them even more, knowing that they wouldn't know what a Cro-Magnon was unless it was mal-explained to them by Paddy McGuinness. <laughs> there we go. <laughs> so, um, yes, yeah, so I think um, I found, you know, this sort of hatred towards Leavers, you know, that kind of attitude, you know, it was weird that with that kind of inclusive and uh, empathetic attitude towards people on the other side, to the leavers that, you know, Remain didn't win. And here's a clip of um, Man of the People and relatable uh, Eddie Izzard trying to uh, educate leavers on their idiotic views. As okay. an EU member, we have no control. Okay. That's Hillary, the point. Hillary, 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 Hillary yeah, Best. Now, look, we're <laughs> we're right, we'll come to the economy. Gonna ever, I'm going to come to the economy. Ever announce you're just going to politically we avoid it? We're going to control Hillary Best. Because we want to control the Avoid the point. You we cannot. Your predecessors, they didn't stop them coming in. Shut up! Right. So, yeah, I mean, where did it go wrong? You know, and he wore the, you know, the pink beret and... Lippy to show solitude with the man on the street. And um, so it's bizarre, you know, that these, uh, these levers threw it back in our faces. I guess my own uh, TV programme, what well, I helped co-create, um, Brexageddon, we sent two very sympathetic Remainers bravely north of the M25 to try and um, convert some uh, levers. And uh, here's a clip of that. I'm Seb. And I'm Miles. And we're North London's most fabulous guardianistas. And we're let's devastated that everybody voted to leave the EU. So we started a petition to have a second EU referendum. We've got 4.1 million signatures, but we want more. So we decided to go to Salford in Manchester, where like 57% of people voted to leave the EU. Ew. Sign the petition to stay in the EU and admit you're a bit wrong. Excuse me, could I speak to you for two seconds about signing a petition to stay in the EU? Not, you. Not signing nothing. Well, we, it's we, the best thing the uh, UK to uh, did leave. I think you must Sorry? be a bit confused no, about that. No, I'm not that. confused. Did you mean remain and got it wrong? No, I meant out. Oh. Out. And you can read and everything? I can read and I can write. Have you not heard, right, that a lot of banks like JP Morgan are, are going to get rid of a lot of their staff, but you won't be able to get a job at JP Morgan now? It's hard enough to get a job at it. Right. We had a fishing industry. The EU took it off us, our fishing line. It's but they've right. given us so much more. Like, what did they give us? Well, you know, Beaujolais. Why risk that? They've never stopped selling us wine. But there's a small chance they might, and I'm oh, terrified. Right. We don't think you're racist, you know, we just I think just you're want, wrong. I, I just want this country to get out of the fucking shit hole it's in now. Well, Salford was a tad disappointing, so we're heading back home and going gorilla in East London. OMG, gorilla emojis? Oh, yeah. Can you sign our petition to stay in the EU? Stay in? Yeah. Mm. Fuck you. Yeah. I've already done that online, but I'll Have do you. it again. The start of a middle class militia. Oh, that's crazy. We will absolutely kill you yeah. with memes, yeah. Snapchats, and good organic kale. And we're going to have to take some more extreme measures against the people who voted Leave. Let's do it. Let's they're do all it. xenophobic racists. Yeah, I know they are. Did you vote Remain? I voted out, actually. Oh, did you really? Yeah, I did. Oh. But you totally oh, look like you've got all the right tattoos. Yeah, I thought yeah. you would have. You'd have definitely voted Remain. No. Were you doing it yeah. ironically? Yeah. yeah, did you vote ironically? Oh my god, it was a joke. Are you being amazing? I reckon it's probably about five million people. We're just so dumb, we yeah. didn't really know what to do. Only five million of the 17 well, no, million people well, were dumb. Possibly 10, 15. I reckon probably a bit more. Okay. Why did you vote Leave, man? Because there's too many people in this country at the moment. But why don't we just kick out some of those little Englanders people and Parisians? Because they're much cooler. So, uh, so we were doing our best, and you know I pitched in as well. So I um, got involved and allied myself with, um, you know, someone who was really relatable to the woman or man on the street, um, multi-millionaire member of the uh, Metropolitan Elite, Bob Geldof. Um, there's a kind of Where's Wally style picture up there. I'm up there, next to Bob, and then. Um, they, I'm not in that one. There I am. <laughs> Doing wanker signs at fishermen and stuff. So, you know, to try and tell them that, you know, why on earth 
were they wanting to leave the EU? So this was our, part of our well thought out campaign to get the fishermen on side. Um, <laughs> now, you know, like most Remainers, when I heard it was on a boat, I donned my best kind of yachting look, trying to really, uh, you know, blend. So I've got, uh, you know, 75 pound espadrilles were part of my ensemble. So, um, anyway, so it didn't, you know, it didn't backfire at all. And, uh, you know, some positive headlines up there. And uh, so next, I guess shortly after that, um, Remain lost the referendum. And so that was that, that was that, you know, and I was so angry that I forgot to not call people pikeys and chavs that I'd previously trained myself to call low income. And, and, you know, I was so just enraged the whole time. So, like, if I ever, you know, the rare occasions when I'd see builders on the street who weren't Eastern European, I'd give them mean looks so they know that I knew what they'd done. <laughs> and, uh, you know, at family events, I mean, I would try and subtly feel, you know, to try and, with my in-laws, golfing friends and people like that, I would try to subtly find out which way they'd voted by asking them questions like, have they ever been in the Polish section of the, their local Sainsbury's? And are they a racist idiot who wants to throw our economy into Armageddon? And so just subtle stuff like that. Um, and that's really uh, how I would have stayed, I guess, sipping my flat white or cortado. And then uh, complacency. But then I, then I sort of had the kind of epiphany that I mentioned earlier that made me stop worrying plus moaning and learn to love Brexit. So it was on a, on a day out in a kind of an ironic day out at the seaside where I, you know, a, a Ramona like me would only ever go to, on an ironic trip to the seaside to manufacture an uh, anecdote for a TED talk. And... Um, <laughs> and so it was on this ironic day out that um, me and my family... We're walking past the kind of dying arcades and the dying fish and chip shop and the literally dying pensioners. I think they were literally dying. And then, um, and then that was where something significant finally occurred. I, um, my daughter, Agnes, yes, Agnes, I did tell you I voted Remain, and um, Agnes got a uh, Union Jack flag. And, well, she wanted me, I mean, she had it in her hand and she was desperate for me to buy it for her. And I thought, I'm not sure if I should buy her that. It's a kind of, she's going to look like a provincial idiot at the first night of the proms. And then I thought, hang on a minute. What about our, look what happened with the Remain campaign where we sort of rejected symbols of nationalism and we sort of, we went down that route and then we lost. So I, she, she bought it and she started waving it around and, and I thought, well, she doesn't look like a two-foot member of the BNP. She actually looks sort of like a proud patriot who... Um, you know, who could be inspired to kind of lead Britain to be a proud, independent nation. So it was that moment where I converted and I started to think, hang on, there's loads of good things about Brexit. And here's, here's some, uh, here's some uh, good things that we may not have thought of. Brexit is good for the environment. Look at this. So on the one hand... Fox is racking up the air miles, but he's cunningly not signing any trade deals. That means there's going to be no business travel to the UK at all. So that means no air, no sea, or no land transport, which is good news for the environment. Plus, I think, you know, we're underrating him here as well, because he's, by not signing any trade deals, it means we're not going to be able to export anything to the EU or anywhere else. So all the filthy factories are going to have to be turned off. So good news for the environment. Brexit will reduce the number of motorway traffic accidents. How is that going to happen? Well, if we leave the customs union, the M20, for one, to Dover, is just going to turn into a massive car park. So less road traffic accidents, which is good news for everyone, I think you'd agree. I'm not an expert, but I think the traffic has to be moving to cause accidents. <laughs> Brexit will reduce the amount of workplace injuries. It's simple. If there's far less work, how are you going to get injured there? 
but it's like, um, and so I think, you know, we should thank Brexit for the fact that with less work, there's going to be less incidences to burn yourself on a kettle or to trip over a rogue laptop lead. And I think it's going to save the NHS potentially sort of 350 million a week, maybe. <laughs> That's a bit of a headline about that. Um, <clears throat> Brexit is going to finish off the bankers. And I don't know about you, but I really resent the fact that their massive PAYE contributions, you know, pay, pay, you know, we don't really want to use their sort of dirty cash to pay for our public services. So I think, you know, it was good that they were all going to go to Frankfurt and Paris. And then, you know, the, the German Chancery is going to have to choke on all that dirty cash. So um, anyway, now I think I'm going to miss off the last one because I'm kind of overrunning time-wise. But I think, as I mentioned earlier, I work in um, TV, so it's natural for me to come up with a, um, me and my colleagues to come up with a sort of pro-Brexit TV program. So as part of that, we've been pitching it to all the big hitters. So we've got, um, we've been out to Farage, obviously, and then we went to the queen of Brexit herself, Katie Hopkins. So we called her up, and this is the first time we've um, ever played the call. So um, this is my colleague uh, Hayden Prowse ringing Katie Hopkins, using a slightly different name. And um, yeah, here's the call. Uh, and so, yeah, see what you think. This is her, agree you know, we're pitching her a TV idea that she thinks is real. Hello, Kate speaking. Hey, I want to just sort of give you a top line pitch, see what you think. Um, it's um, due to be um, broadcast live from Manchester in the next year, sort of a year before yeah. our departure from the EU. Um, it's a beauty pageant, and it's going to be mm. called Miss Brexit. <laughs> <laughs> it's, a, it's just a fantastic celebration of, of British indigenous womanhood, and also a fantastic way to piss off the left. <laughs> That's the critical point, at which point I'm in. Right. Uh, good. We'd like you to be a judge, essentially. Yes, mm. good. Good. I mean, <laughs> I mean, good. They, there's Miss Black America, there's Miss Latina, there's even Miss Transgender. Where's the Miss Brexit? Yeah, right. true, uh, true enough. And mm. um, what's your thought on it? You'll have um, different well, in, indigenous women, women from... Only from different parts of the country, you know, Miss Maidenhead, uh, Miss Stanet South, all that kind of stuff, you know? Yes, exactly. Mm. And, and will they be representing areas that voted out, presumably, not areas that, that voted... That would be correct, exactly. I mean, you wouldn't necessarily want to have Miss Islington North, would you? <laughs> no, you wouldn't. And uh, I guess from your perspective, if you're, in terms of the diversity and things that they'll kick off about, you're allowing anybody who registered to vote and voted uh, leave from a leave area to be part of it, yes or yeah, not? Ex well, exactly. Any sort of indigenous British person that registered to vote leave will have sort of various competitions within the within the pageant, you know, who can speak the least French, for example, um, you know, uh, perfect, <laughs> perfect skull shape, uh, best ancestry, uh, best use of a Dyson, uh, who can tell halal from normal meat, various <laughs> other people. So you'd, be, you'd be on board, would you? Potentially. Uh, yeah, no, of course. I think as, as long as you tell Well, that, I think we've got not... plenty of stuff in there that should really piss exactly. off the media. I mean, we've got a whole competition, how to fight off a Muslim grooming gang, you know, and the best, <laughs> and the winner of that will go through to the final round. Oh, and there's obviously a swimsuit, swim, <laughs> there's obviously, Katie, a swimsuit competition which will keep out all the Muslims. <laughs> so that'll be funny. Have you thought about sponsored, so think someone mm, like um, Protein World, they're Protein really good World, fun. Yeah. They're the ones that did Beachbody Ready, which was the bikini right. ad that Sadiq Khan banned from right. the underground. But right. their media guy, he's the head of marketing and his name, I can't recall, is mm. very funny and is part would be probably a bit Protein more on World. team. So in terms of the aim of the thing, mm. who's, what, who's going to front it up? Is it and there's lots of people we're considering for, for judges, you know, if we're sort of thinking Eric Trump, David Duke, David Irving. And what we want yes. you for, Katie, and I wanted to sort of ask you this, and obviously yes. I want to be very sensitive with this, we, you know, we Don't want you to be the outspoken one. Yes, exactly. We want you to, That's you, fine. How far are you prepared to go, would you say? Uh, well, I think that I think I would go and think about it, but I think that's the, the, the 
key thing for mm. all of this is you guys have clearly got the noise. Mm. You guys have clearly got some of the the stunts and things, which I think are, mm. are great. I mean, so, for, for instance, if you were on the panel, you know, would would you be prepared to sort of you know put the Jewish contestant in the train and, and send her off to a shower somewhere, for instance? No, that oh. definitely wouldn't happen. Right, I would okay. Be... okay, so she didn't want to do that bit, but um, <laughs> so um, we've got uh, you know, if anyone wants to. I've got her email and phone number if anyone ever wants to contact her and say how good she is and what a nice person she is, um, come and speak to me after. But I think what I'd like to say is, um, you know, my journey from one community to the other was difficult, but I'd urge you to make the switch. Now I'm on board with Brexit. You can get on board. Katie's on board. And it's much better to switch to liking Brexit before liking Brexit gets cool. And, um, and that's it from me. Thank you very much for listening and watching. Cheers. Cheers.